Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. Starting today, you and I will work on the SAT writing portion, the SAT grammar questions in particular. The book that we will be using is the one that you see here, the official SAT study guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it in order for you to be able to follow the work. The grammar questions that we'll be solving today are the ones that you will find in the first exam. The book contains this book contains 10 SAT real, real SATs, and today we'll of course start with exam number one. The the problems, the questions that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on the page number 407. Please turn to it. Page 407, and today of course is our day number one. Our goal is to go through all 10 of these questions and do as many of these grammar questions as we can do. These are simple multiple choice grammar questions. Here's the deal. The so-called SAT writing part, the so-called writing portion of the exam, the vast majority of your score in the so-called writing portion of the exam has very little to do with actual writing, which is the essay. 80% of your so-called writing exam, writing portion, the score for it comes from simple multiple choice grammar questions which test very elementary concept of the grammar which is what we're going to try to learn today uh, not today but to, which is what we're going to try, try to learn to get together starting from today you and I together do you understand once in a while I'm going to make mistakes no big deal as you can probably gather by now by, by now uh, that uh, I'm not a native speaker but uh, watch a couple of videos and decide for yourself whether it's worth your time do you understand so let's get going Pro Question number one on page number 407. If you turn the page, you will see that there are 11 questions of this type. And there, are, there are five of them on page number 407. And then it goes on to question number 11 on 408. And on page 409, you will see that there are different type of questions. Because there are different type of questions, so starting with question number 12, that tells us there's a scale of difficulty for this particular type of question that we're about to do goes from 11, 1 through, 1 through 11, 1 through 11, which simply means that the first 3 or 4 are going to be easy, the next 3 or 4 are going to be medium, and the last 3 or 4 are the ones that we're, where we have to slow down a little bit. But number number 1, especially the first page, you see they're 1 through 5, they're going to, they're very simple, very straightforward. It says, a recent report indicates that the sleep-deprived driver, the sleep-deprived drivers, that's why you have to have the book in front of you because I'm not going to write everything. Sleep deprived driver caused more than 100,000 accidents. Cause accidents. Now here's the deal. Here's what you want. Here's what I want you to do. Get in the habit of doing it from exam number from from problem number one, from exam number one from the very first day. Get in the habit of doing this thing. Here's what I want you to do. From now on, anytime you do these grammar questions, I want you to physically, literally cover the answer choices with one hand. Okay, if you're, if you're right-handed, uh, use the left hand to cover the answer choices and vice versa, uh, if, you, if you're left-handed. Cover your answer choices with your hand, literally cover them. Do not look at the answer choices, read the sentence and fix it yourself. Being a, na be, being a native speaker, actually, that should be that much easier for you than it is for me. Just read the bloody thing and fix it before you look at the answer choices. For example, here, it says, the sleep-deprived drivers cause accident. The question is, how did they cause accident? Isn't that the first thing that comes to your mind? How did they cause the accident? They go on to say, they go on to say that they fell asleep. They fell asleep. Is that how you're going to say it? Don't worry about the, all the details that they give. You just concentrate, concentrate on the important bits. Sleep deprived drivers. Th this is how the sentence reads right now. This, it, it, it reads. So this is how the sentence reads as of, as of right now. It says fell asleep rather. It says sleep deprived driver, sleep deprived driver cause accident, they fell asleep. No. Sleep deprived drivers cause accident by by falling asleep. That's it, we're done. By falling asleep. Now lift your hand and pick the answer choice that comes closest to it and the answer of course is C. That's it, we're done by falling asleep. How did they how did they cause accident? By falling asleep. That's it. Not 
It says uh, they caused more than 100,000 accidents last year. They fell asleep at the wheel. No, not they fell asleep at the wheel, by falling asleep at the wheel. That's all. Number two. Next one. Keep it simple. You understand? Keep the answer choice covered. Cover the answer choice immediately, even if I forget to tell you, even if I forget to remind you. You should do this instinctively. Okay, and that will take some time before it becomes uh, uh, something that you do by instinct, uh, automatically. As soon as you get to these questions, cover the answer choice immediately. Don't look at the answer choices, because answer, what you have to understand is that they're giving us five answer choices. One of them is actually is the right answer, obviously. What's the purpose of the other four answers? It's a very simple concept. The purpose of the other four answers that they give you is not to help you find the right answer, but it's to confuse you. The easiest and the surest way of making sure, uh, surest way of ensuring uh, that you do not get confused by this mumbo jumbo that they give you and the other four answer choices is to not look at the bloody things. Don't look at them. Cover them physically with your hand. The depths of the number two, the depths of the Arctic Oceans are hard to study. The depth of the Arctic Oceans, depth of the Arctic Ocean are hard to study. Question again is why? Well, they go on and tell us why. They tell us because, because they go on to tell us because the icy surface, icy surface, they go on to tell us is being difficult. This is how this is how the sentence reads. Because the icy surface is being difficult. To which you will say, what the hell? The depth of the Atlantic Oceans are hard to study because the icy surface is difficult. That's it. Get rid of this being part. Just with your pencil, you must have to, pe you have, to have pencil in your hand when you're doing this thing. With your pencil, physically, literally cross it out. That's it. You're done. Because the icy surface is difficult. That's it. You're done. Lift your, lift your hand at this point and look at the answer choices and pick the one that comes closest to it. And it goes, and the, and the answer would be, the icy surface is difficult, icy surface is difficult to study mainly because the icy surface is, let me start again, let me start from the beginning, the depth of the Arctic Ocean are hard to study mainly because the icy surface is difficult, that's it, that's all they have done, they've taken out the word being and that's it, and that's answer choice C. Very simple. It's, why is it difficult to study? Because the icy surface is, uh, uh, is difficult. It's difficult to work on. That's all. Number three. Several of the forest fires that occurred last summer, the forest fires that occurred, that occurred last summer, which were because people are careless. Now as you can see when I'm writing this thing I'm very sloppy, I'm very clumsy, I'm very, my handwriting is atrocious and there is a reason for it. It's because I'm taking it for granted that you have the book in front of you and you're not depending on my reading the question to you. So that's why it's there. If it's scribbled you, you can figure out what it is because it's right in front of you. It says Several of the forest fires that occurred last summer, which were because, which were because people are careless. It's a very clumsy sentence. Let's fix it, shall we? Don't look at the answer choices. Keep the answer choice covered. Keep the answer choices covered. Several of the forest fires that occurred last summer. First of all, I don't like this word which. For, forest fire that occurred last summer, last summer, were, no, were, were what? Were caused, caused, caused by what? Caused by people's carelessness. That's how I would fix it. They say because people are careless, replace that by because they were caused by people's carelessness. So this is how the sentence reads now. Uh, sentence reads now. It says the forest fire, the forest fires that occurred the forest fires that occurred last summer, get rid of the word which, get rid of it, cross it out with a pencil, were 
course, this is what you should be writing. You should literally write it down as you cross it out, as you cross out this part with your pencil, write underneath it. Don't be lazy. Write it literally underneath it. Trust me, it will save time in the long run. You won't have to go through uh, trying to figure out which one is the right answer among the five. The right answer will immediately pop up, uh, pop out rather. It will pop right out. You see, if you don't read, if you don't cover the answer choices and if you don't fix it yourself, if you just read the sentence and then immediately look at the five answer choices, which is what most people do, in that scenario the right answer hides from you. This way it will pop right out. So this is what it says. Forest fires that occurred last summer were, were caused by, were caused by people's carelessness. That's how it reads. Let me get rid of all the others so you can see what, what it says now. So we cross out this part. This part is all gone. This is all gone. This is what it reads right now. One more time. Forest fires, forest fire that occurred last summer were caused by people's carelessness. What I want you to do at this point is to lift your hand and find one answer choice that comes closest to it. That's it. Very simple. Don't analyze it. Don't turn this thing into a philosophy exam. This is not about philosophy. Keep it very simple. Just lift your hand and then come pick one answer that comes closest to it. That is the end of the story. Let's go through them. Now there's no point in reading A, answer choice A is simply what the, is repeating what is stated in the sentence. B says, were caused by human carelessness. There you go. Human carelessness, people's carelessness, same thing. The answer is B. That's it. They were caused by, B said, people's carelessness, they say human's carelessness. Big, big deal. The answer is B. Next one. Number four. Doctor Who. Doctor Who, or Doctor Wu rather, not Who, has, has disproved a widely accepted theory. Dis disproved a theory. This is what the sentence read right now. It says Doctor Who, or Doctor Wu rather, has dis disproved a theory when when she showed that the identical nuclear particles do not always act alike. Would you go around saying that she has disapproved something, uh, dis disproved rather, that she has, she has disproved something when uh, you go on to explain when she showed that the identical nuclear particles do not act alike? No, we don't need the word has here. She disproved a theory which previously stated that apparently these particles act alike and she just proved that that is not the case. She just proved, she just showed that that is not the case. In other words, she disproved it. So there's no need, there is no need for the word has. Notice I'm not using any terms from the grammar. You will not find me using uh, lingos from the grammar because it's, this doesn't serve any purpose. As long as you understand the concept, as long as you can figure out how to fix it, that's all it matters here. Nobody's going to give you extra credit if you know the proper terminology of what it is called by grammarians. It, it doesn't matter. Do you understand? Whether it's a, whether it's a uh, auxiliary verb or whether it's a, a present tense or past tense or, or adverb or adjective, it doesn't matter whether or, not you, whether or not you know the terms. All we are interested in is that you can fix this sentence in a, in a timely manner, in a, in, 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 a, in a reasonable manner, a reasonable amount of time that is. Do you understand? We're looking for speed and accuracy. That's all. That's all we're looking for. We're not looking for, we're not there to, to show, to display uh, our knowledge of grammar. Nobody cares about it. Okay? It's the computer who's going to grade it. Number five. We generally think of Canada as our northern neighbor. We generally think of Canada as our northern neighbor. And more than half the states extend farther north, farther north, farther north than Canada's southernmost point. What they're trying to say here, the gist of the sentence, the, the essence of the sentence, the nub of the sentence, that's what it is. You have to be able to quickly recognize, understand, realize the gist of the sentence, the nub of the sentence. What is it that the sentence is trying to say here? What, what it, they're trying to say here is that, oh, I almost gave it away. 
the way I was speaking, I almost gave it away. So I'm going to give it away. I'm just going to actually say it. What they're trying to say here is that despite the fact, there you go. That's your thing. And more than, and this end part should go. And more than this part, should, this has to go. I just said it. Despite, despite the fact, so I'm going to continue speaking now. What, what, what the sentence is trying to say is that despite the fact that more than half the states in the U.S. actually lie farther north than the southernmost tip of the Canada. More than half of the, which I did not know myself, apparently more than half of the U.S. states lie farther north than the southernmost tip of Canada. Despite that fact, we still think of Canada as our northern neighbor. That's what it's trying to say here. But it will make more sense to say it like this. Let's read it together here. It says, we think of Canada, we think of Canada as our northern neighbor, despite the fact, despite the fact that, despite the fact that half the states extend farther north. So again, now we're going to put the part that I've crossed out here, I'm going to actually erase it just, just so it's easy for us to see. These are gone. Cross it out with your pencil. Cross it out into pencil, these three words, and insert these words. It's insert the word, despite the fact that, so it should read, sentence should read, sentence should read like this now. We think of Canada, we think of Canada as our northern neighbor, despite the fact that half of the U.S. states extend farther north than the southernmost tip of Canada. That's it, we're done. All I want you to do at this point is to lift your hand, go through the answer choices, and the punk, uh, pick the one that comes closest to it, do not analyze it, do not scrutinize it, do not sit there and uh, philosophize it, philosophize it to, to death. Just pick the, simply pick the one that comes closest to what you just said here. That's all. B says, again, I, I never, uh, we never bother wasting our time reading A because A just repeats whatever is stated in the sentence. B says, uh, and it is the case that, no, 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 we're looking for something that means despite the fact that. C says, but more than, no, that's not what we're looking for. D says, whereas, whereas is not very close to despite the fact that. Well, there you go, E. E says, however, that's the same as despite the fact that, however. In other words, we're looking for something that brings out the contrast. We're trying to make a very sharp contrast here, the contrast between the, uh, between the, between the fact and, uh, and uh, our perception. Our perception is that Canada is our northern neighbor. Despite the fact that more than half the states in the U.S. actually lie farther north to the, to the southern, farther north than the southernmost tip of Canada, that's all. The answer is E. The answer is E. I will see you tomorrow when we'll do the next page. All right? Bye now.